is Liz with one of the strangest simulators ever made, Goat Simulator. Play as a regular run-of-the-mill goat, exploring a wide variety of locales, doing normal goat things, like headbutting people, blowing up gas stations, sacrificing humans to Satan to become a demon goat, and other perfectly normal things that goats do. Meant as a parody of simulation games, Goat Simulator is designed to be as broken and buggy as possible without crashing. The physics are wonky, collision detection is almost non-existent, and there's not much to do besides hitting and licking everything you can. But the sheer craziness of the game makes Goat Simulator really fun to play. Next up is Two Worlds, an RPG from 2007 that would look dated in 2001. Set in a generic fantasy world, the things this game fails to do are breathtaking. Shitty combat, boring quests, and even worse dialogue are the most obvious things wrong with it. So what prevents this game from being truly awful? Easy. The voice acting. The village elder sent me. He wanted me to bring you the payment should you not return to the village. And why should I not go back there, pray? Seriously, did the developers just pick up some random people off the street for this? The voice acting is so bad, you can't help but laugh at it. And since Two Worlds is fully voiced, you can be entertained for hours just listening to people read some of the worst writing in video game history. And you want to know what the best part of Two Worlds is? There's actually only one world. Let that sink in. Let's get to the chase for number three. 50 Cent Blood on the Sand features 50 Cent fighting terrorists to recover a diamond-encrusted human skull that he got after a concert in the Middle East. If that doesn't sound awesome to you, then you are a joyless person. Blood on the Sand is actually a pretty fun game. The shooting mechanics are great, the story is bizarre, yet so over the top, you can't help but like it. And the voice acting is so cheesy that it actually becomes charming after a while. Plus, there's a button that is solely dedicated to swearing. Let me repeat that. There's a button that's only used to swear, and you can upgrade it. Fucking take it! Why do you leave, motherfucker? Fuck you! I don't know how this game got made, but I do know that you'll have an absolute blast playing it. And number two is Earth Defense Force 2017. Here you'll play as a soldier fighting off an alien invasion that mostly consists of giant ants and other insects. From the get-go, it looks like shit, with corpses disappearing in seconds and other special effects being almost non-existent. The voice acting sucks, the glitches are numerous, and all you can do is literally shoot a bunch of giant insects. This should suck, but shooting those giant insects is so much fun. For all its faults, Earth Defense Force is inexplicably fun to play, with over 100 weapons at your disposal to kill hordes of alien creatures. It's like an old-school arcade game, and playing it in co-op makes the experience even better. This is pure gameplay with no extra trimmings or fat holding it back. And if that appeals to you, there's no harm in trying Earth Defense Force out. Coming in at number one is Deadly Premonition, which finally answers the question, what if David Lynch made a Twin Peaks video game? The result is a surreal look at a small town America through the eyes of an FBI agent that likes to talk to a voice in his head. Like all of the other games on this list, it looks pretty bad, with awkward animations, horrible controls, and one of the worst 30 minutes in all of gaming history. But the real appeal lies in how weird literally everything is. From the dialogue, to the music, to the gameplay, it needs to be seen to be believed. Did you see that, Zach? Clear as a crisp spring morning. F. K in the coffee. There is nothing else like Deadly Premonition, and it might unironically be one of the best video games ever made. It's so bad, it transcends awfulness and becomes one of the most memorable games you'll ever play. And for 20 bucks, there's no harm in checking it out. Sounds like the sinner's sandwich. Self-inflicted punishment to atone for past sins. He's setting an example. Mm, I can't believe it. This is fantastic. It's really good. 